Hello, my name is Grzegorz Wojciechowski, but you can call me just Greg. And normally I'm the software developer in Core Kernel team, uh, which is sitting in the Copenhagen. Uh, you don't see a lot of my works because most of my works is low level code working with the C++ containers that are used internally inside Unity. But sometimes I also doing the dive into the C sharp code and trying to fix some problems for you guys. One of them was at some point giving you control over the memory. So you as the developers could know, know what happening with the native memory that is allocated from the C, by your C sharp call, calls. But in the meantime of developing this project, uh, it came out to me that I don't really know what I do in there. Very often I had cool project, which I showcased to a few people, but there was also this question, what happening with memory there? And sadly, I couldn't answer that question. And probably all of you have the same problem. You're doing something with the Unity and you really don't know what's happening with memory globally or even locally sometimes. And this was a big problem for me. And this was also the reason why I shifted a little bit my focus on the projects that I'm working on. And I focus on two that I will be presenting today, which is the memory profiler. This is tool is created by group by awesome people that putting their time and effort into allowing you guys to look what's happening with the memory. And memory is a tricky problem. Everybody know what's happening in the memory when they work on it locally. I'm writing the system, I know what's happening with memory. I'm allocating memory, I'm using it, I'm releasing it. This is C++. In C Sharp, it's a little bit more tricky because of the garbage collector, but it's very similar. I'm using it, I don't using it, it should be released in the next garbage collector collect. The problem is that it's not so simple like it sounds. Even in C code, you need to use specialized allocators, bucket allocators, and uh, temp allocators, and a lot of different kinds, which are not only affected by your allocation but also by the allocation happening in the whole system, which is really hard to understand when you're writing your system, even for us. So we know from our personal experience as the Unity developers that the profiling of memory is not best experience. Uh, Unity is the mix between C Sharp and C++, which making stuff harder because you, don't, you cannot use the native profilers, which platform profilers, which uh, normally you would use in the C++ code. And uh, because of that, we also, as I mentioned, dealing with this problem internally. And we know that Unity lacking the good tools. That's why generally, this don't mean that we don't have any tools. That we have the native profilers, which I already mentioned, uh, PS4, Xbox One, uh, we have uh, some profilers like Vtune, we have the uh, uh, profiling tools for iOS, we have the uh, analyzing for Android, and they are great for the native allocation, as I mentioned. The problem is they don't have deep look into the managed part of our code. We have also some allocators, some uh, profilers that are built on the top of our Unity API. Uh, how many of you use some kind of the profiling inside the Unity for the memory. How many of you use the built-in the profiler? The one that look like that. Okay, pretty a lot. Uh, how many of you use the Bitbucket memory profiler? It's a little bit less. And uh, for me, the biggest problem with that is you need to drag it into your project you need to sometimes always overlapping with the libraries that you're using there, and generally it's a little bit problematic. But it's the tool that if you didn't use, want to use it with current uh, Unity versions, you can without any problems. What we'll be talking about is completely new profiler, which is built with uh, thinking, we building it so we can dig into C++ and C# -sharp memory in very similar way. So the new memory profiler is completely new API, 
which allow which capturing the C sharp allocations and C plus plus allocation uh, in the same time. This requires a lot of change internally, so we don't plan to backporting it. Uh, cool thing about it is like, uh, that we can investigate the relations between the objects. So we can check what native objects holding the reference for the managed one and trace the references inside the managed so you can easily find out why, for example, some objects existing to memory. Uh, what I mentioned before, this is also for a tool for us, so we won't hide any allocation from you guys. All the allocation, all the tool will be released for you in ex exactly the same way how we will we are using it internally. So all the allocation that happening inside Unity, you will be know about it. This may be sometimes uh, a little bit disturbing, what you will see, but it's also disturbing for us. <laughs> yeah. And uh, another thing that we want to improve is the problem with the mobile devices. Current Bitbucket profiler and uh, generally the snapshot API that exists in the current uh, Unity have one problem. It's allocating the, taking the capture, which allocating the whole memory for the snapshot, and then sending it through the memory. With the new memory profiler, we try to think more about the streaming, where we splitting the capture into small packages that we're sending through the network. Thanks to that, we want to drop the overhead of the memory required to take the snapshot. But this don't mean that we're forgetting about the big project. This is kind of, I coming from the AAA uh, background. I work in the AAA uh, game companies, and I would love the profiler be also usable for really big project, which have millions of allocations, and you still can investigate it, still can see what's happening then, and everything in normal time, not half hour taking the dump of the memory, and then analyzing it, loading it for another half hour. And uh, new memory profiler, as I mentioned, is completely new API which uh, will override the old one. So we have the snapshot API. When you call it, it will trigger the uh, TCP IP message to the player and collect all the information of the player and send it back to the uh, editor. There will be also local mode, which is not available right now inside the profiler, inside the current snapshot API, where you will be able to dump the snapshot in the player for example, by pressing some button, it will be saved on the device, and then you can import it to the editor and analyze. And you can do the same with the editor. Generally, take the snapshot and see what's happening with the memory of the editor. This will generate the snapshot file, uh, .snap, which then you can load on the C++ on C -sharp side with the memory snapshot file reader. This API will be available for you guys, so you can build tools on top of that. If you're using already existing API, we don't want to screw you up, generally. And we spend time into wrapping, uh, writing the wrapper around the old AP, uh, new API that ex behave exactly like the old one. So if you're taking the old snapshot, it will trigger a new snapshot, which will be then converted to old one. Thanks to that, all the tools should work perfectly fine. And on top of that, we're offering new UI for the memory profiler which I will be showcasing right now. So you are one of the first people outside of the Unity who will see how it looks. <laughs> the first thing that you will see after starting the memory profiler is this view, which we called Workbench. And uh, it will be a collection of your snapshot. You can add the snapshot, remove the snapshot, save the Workbench, our goal is that if you're analyzing something, closing the workbench, returning to the workbench, it looks almost similar. We are in the same view, the same snapshot. Uh, after loading the snapshot, it will be the same place where you are analyzing it. The filters will be applied and everything. Right now, I have the editor capture done before. So it's taking a few seconds to load. And first thing that you will see is the uh, tree map view which people using the Bitbucket memory profiler probably know. 
So it's nothing new. We have some uh, selecting the object or shader, and you can analyze what's happening inside the group of the shaders. What wasn't available before is the, uh, the view of the allocations that, that we selected in given moment. So this one don't have any references, so it's reference from the C sharp code, but let's check the, this one. So I have Lucia, uh, Lucia Grande warning font, which from this view, I can check why it exists in memory. I pressing the ref count, and it's showing me all the objects that referencing the Lucha Grande font. In this case, we have a few other fonts, all of them Lucha Grande, no surprise. One of them is uh, referenced, but another one. So it's inheriting stuff. Let's go back. We can also zoom, on, uh, zoom in it and see on into the small allocation also, which there is a lot of them. Yeah, this is one of the first views. The another view is the memory map, which is something new, which wasn't available before. This is the view of the memory that happening inside the unity. The green part is the native allocation that are done by the unity. The blue one are the managed part. What is interesting about it? We can see, uh, for example, the bucket allocator that I mentioned before. And we see that the filled up green is the amount of the space that is already occupied inside. So as you see, we'll, you'll have full deep into the memory that Unity, uh, allocation that Unity doing. The thing about it is like, we'll be developing this tool further. We'll be including new tools we plan to develop it. It won't be like Bitbucket memory profiler, which is there. It was side project by one of uh, people that work in Unity, but it was never part of the Unity. This will be part of the Unity. From interesting another stuff is that that memory capture capturing its own memory allocation. So all this stuff that you are seeing here is the block that are used for the allocating memory for the capture. And generally our goal, long term, will be to make it as small as possible. So you can run it on as uh, low uh, tier devices as we possibly can. For more advanced users that want to dig a little bit more, we have also more specialized view, which is mostly the table, which allowing you to investigate all the memory that happening inside the in given capture. So let's try to make the capture of sample adventure game. Let's start it. And let's return back to the profiler. Mm -hmm. Generally, yeah. This really work. Hmm. Weird. We'll try. Profiler, don't. <laughs> well. Something didn't work out perfectly fine. This looks like it's taking the capture. Oh, let's close the console. Let's try the make capture. We'll see if it. Yes, we took the capture right now from the game. The important feature about it is like we on the request of uh, some people, added the screenshot, which allow you to see where you took the snapshot. And this is the game that you see here. Uh, from interesting stuff that maybe everybody kind of like the tools. So let's search for, I know what to search for. So I will group some by the type. 
thanks to that I can quickly find what I need. And let's go on the conditions. Cool feature about this capture is you getting information also about what's happening inside the memory of the uh, C sharp. So when we're taking capture, we're also capturing uh, the value of the fields. So in this case, the condition is the beard disturbed. You can check all the values and you should be able to check all the values. Right now, the thing about it, we still don't uh, display the call stacks, but this will be really important for us to allow you guys to be able from this, get to your code seamlessly almost. But it's, as I mentioned, it's still work to and uh, work in progress. So there may be some mistakes and generally we don't want to wait with it till we polish it completely fine, it's completely. The thing about it is like, even two that is, as you see, not fully finished, it's already useful for us. Internally, few people inside Unity use it and it allow them to quickly find out some troubles, troubles with the memory that they had. Let's go to different location and take another capture. Let's open this one. And we're seeing that we have some stuff. Interesting thing about it is to show you how easy it is to get from this view to the allocation itself. Let's check from where coffee coming the coffee bot Albedo. It's one reference, so it's pretty easy. It's material, which is reference only once, by skin mesh render native object body. So I have started the editor with the game. Let's search for the body. It's over here. With the previous profilers, it was almost impossible to find these, refer find these dependencies really quickly. With new one, our goal is that it was. Another cool feature about it is that we give it one more option. It's dipping between two snapshots. This is the feature that you will be want to use uh, when you have generally a leak of memory. You are entering another level, leaving some part of the level, and you don't know what's happening. Something shown up, you don't know why. With the new one, let's group it again through the types, and we're seeing what changed. What allocation were deleted, or what is created new, and we can search generally in this group for what we want. We can also sort this, or group, group again. Thanks to that, we have the manage object, for example, and all the manage object. So the tool is really flexible, but we know it's complex. It will, the first version won't be for everybody. And we know that not everybody will want to use it in this version. But as I mentioned, this is just the first, uh, first release that we're doing. Uh, so let's do. What we plan to do it, the preview of the profiler API will be released in 2018.3. It will be for you guys to test it and generally use it however you want. You can, uh, we'll try to open also the release the front end as the open source. We'll be developing it, but you will be free to modify it and generally develop how I've seen already few companies doing. People like adding their own stuff, their own view. New, the profiler will allow you to generally create the view for the uh, tables without modifying the code. This is one of the features that will be coming. Uh, there will be frequent updates. So what you guys seen there is really rough look. It's not what we're searching, it's not Unity. Unity is simple. Unity is allowing everybody to dig into the stuff they want. And if you want more de details, you can get deeper, get into different views, additional, uh, get additional information, but you still can find information quickly. So we want to allow user to collect information about the objects. You're selecting the objects, you're gathering some stats about it and know how much memory this object uses in the memory. 
Uh, another cool feature that I mentioned is bit bucket. Uh, profiler is not part of the unit. The memory profiler v2 will be. We want to it become something like a normal profiler. You're using it when you need. You don't need to drag some project, syncing from uh, external repository, have collision with library that you're using in your project. We don't want it. We want it to be easy and accessible as possible. And generally, that's it. It's like, for us, it's the perfect tool to develop stuff and uh, generally create, uh, create a tool that we will be happy with. And it's allowing me to continue with my projects that I'm working also in work. But, yeah. Because we have time, I would like to listen to some of your problems that you have, question, and I will try to answer them. <laughs> yeah, please to the microphone. Yes. Um, so, sorry, one question about uh, general view. We, we saw the approach was very, um, a very technical approach. Yes. And it was not like in the old snapshots. You all, you saw it from the asset base. You always saw the assets and stuff like that, the game objects directly, yes. and could uh, browse through them. It was way easier to present, for example. Um, yeah. Okay. This object and this object is taking up that much memory to someone who is a non-technician. Yes, but which means um, is there already a view for it, or is it planned to have it also visible from the? The other problem day? with the memory profiler right now yeah. is is collecting the data. Yeah. We have a lot more data than we're presenting, yeah. but uh, visualization we're building right now the whole uh, reading the data and storing it because yeah. this is enormous amount of the memory. It's happening sometimes that memory snapshot can reach like two gigs, three gigs of memory. Yeah. And because of that, we have a lot of data. We're working on the way of processing it like in basic way, tables, but we have in our mind completely different views. The simplification, as you mentioned, just going from the object directly to the uh, memory quickly. Yeah. So right now, the biggest effort for us is just collecting the data. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Thank you for your great talk. So. Um, for example, on Android, we have native plugins, for example, some video advertisements and stuff, yep. uh, social networks integrations, and they contribute to my application's memory footprint. So will we be able to see those allocations on the new profiler? We plan to ex expose the uh, API that allow to register the allocation from external tools. And generally, we'll be working with the, uh, some of the asset store just to try include uh, just the callback if it's happening from outside. So we have overview of them. But sadly, if something happening outside of the system of Unity, we are not able to get the information about the so allocation. If it's a third party plugin that does not work with Unity and does not report its memory consumption by itself, we won't be able to... We won't be able, because then it's very often taking the memory directly from the uh, native API and just calling the, this API, and we cannot do anything. We don't have any uh, feedback. So th there's no chance to measure the memory that, for example, Java heaps con con consume when the... It may be really hard. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yes. So you mentioned that you want to uh, get it working also for low memory devices. Yes. What's your uh, base target for that? Right now, in meantime of testing, I was able to capture the game generally with 16, uh, 16 max internal allocator. Because what's happening when I'm taking the capture, I'm creating special allocator, which won't polluting any other allocators. 
and all the memory that coming from the uh, snapshot, I try to put into this allocator. And thanks, every other allocation is blocked. So nothing is allocated in the meantime of taking of the capture. And the size of the allocator that I uh, was able to capture from the adventure game was 16 megs. It probably was a little bit lower, but 16 megs was enough to capture free memory. So this is the current result. We will try to drop it even lower. Anybody else? I have a question. Yes. Um, so, to what extent does it find more like obscure references? If, 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 for example, if you're sloppy and leave some static references around that aren't directly um, connected to a game object, is it also capable of finding those uh, those references? So those, those references. It's also. I don't know if you notice there are also static fields for the objects. So we've returned back to the memory capture one which is pretty easy, and let's group it by the conditions. Uh, here you have the static field inside the object here. So you sh should be, in theory, able to be able to find it. Yes. We'll be trying to make it uh, available, possible. The same with the cyclic dependencies. We'll be trying to make the tools that allow you to do that. But this is, uh, right now, our main goal is to verify that we're reporting the correct data. Because if we won't do that, uh, we, you guys will be stuck with this for two years in release for 2018.4. Uh, and if we want to release the backend API as good as possible, because on front end we can work, uh, because this will be a separate uh, repository. So you will be able to, we'll be trying to release it uh, probably monthly at least with new features uh, that will be adding new fixes, changes, and generally be as quick with them as possible. With the backend, it won't be easy. It still, it still be, will be limited by the releases of Unity. And because of that, uh, we're putting the most effort there right now. So as I mentioned, we have a lot of tools like the cyclic dependencies and uh, finding uh, edge cases like this. But it's in future. Super, thanks. Looks awesome. Yeah. Hey, hi. Yes. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, of course, uh, your tool will work when you're in development mode. Yes. Yeah, and uh, do you plan to filter allocations uh, caused by development mode enabled? So you, you will not have the allocations in your runtime. It's development mode. It's, uh, we have few ideas generally about allocation, like uh, we're considering adding tagging that you can uh, find out your allocation easily, to find out uh, some segment of the allocations that you want to mark them. But right now, uh, there is nothing like that to do it easily. Because for us internally, it's normal allocation. It's just done by the additional allocation, very often by the same system. So it's hard to detect what is development and what not. Okay. In, in traditional memory profile uh, we have right now, uh, we have some uh, interesting objects like reserved by profiler, so you, you can maybe filter those things. If this was available before, it will be available also with the new one. Okay. Then Thanks. we probably don't displaying it right now. <laughs> yes? Just uh, another question. Um, is this compatible with the new ECS and multi-threading uh, system? Uh, Yes. With the native, uh, um, this native is, array and, and so on? This is a cool feature about it. Uh, ECS using the native uh, allocations. So it's calling to the allocator inside the C++. Which, uh, with the new memory profiler, we have this nice uh, feature that you are able to access the C++ memory. So yes, it will be visible that you allocated uh, the native memory inside the ECS. Right now, we don't have uh, any way to like trace it easily, but we will need to consider that. ECS is future for the Unity, and we'll be working hard just so it was easy to figure out what's happening there. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Any more questions? Yes. Hello. If we write our own allocators, is there a way to expose them to this interface so we can show, for example, um, how many allocations there are in there, how full they are? 
Yeah? This was visible in the memory uh, map view. So generally, we right now, this one is a little bit smaller, but as you see, there are some allocation, allocator is not filled up. So when you will be reporting, you will be reporting the region of the memory that your allocator is using and how much allocation uh, happening there. So each allocation will be reported separately as with the place of the uh, allocation and size of it. The thing about it is that uh, uh, generally what we're doing even right now, it's like some of our allocators, be, even if you had reported the allocation that is happening inside it, the allocator, for example, in this case, bucket allocator, it's allocating occupy all this memory. This is the memory that is requesting from the system, which means that the, this memory is not available for the game anymore. This is only available for Unity internally, and uh, we just hold it. And the same will be with the external allocations. If you will be reporting it, it means that uh, you occupy this memory, and uh, this will define uh, generally how much of it you're using. Okay, so we can expose our own allocators. Yes, you should be able to expose generally your own allocation. You will just need to, there will be function uh, that will request from you that you will be registering some callbacks. We're still uh, trying to figure it out how to do it in the most optimal way, where you will be reporting the, all the memory that uh, you have. So the different regions, which don't need to be continuous. This is visible with the memory snapshot even, where you have a oh, small pool here. So small pool and large, uh, large pool is done by the same, same allocator. So they don't need to be continuous. You're just reporting the region and what allocation is happening inside. You're defining another region, what allocation are inside. Okay, great, thank you. Yep. Do we have any more questions? Well, yes. So we have some external profiling tools like, for example, Xcode instruments for yes. IOS, which shows the memory footprint, like the way the operation system yes. sees it. So can you recommend some tools on and for Android profiling to see the full the <laughs> full picture besides the Unity allocations? Uh, the, it will show, there is Android Studio, which showing uh, is very similar to the, the instruments. But from what I know, it's coming with the new Android, which is not very popular. Yes, yeah. we, we kind of have the same problem in, inside uh, Unity. So Google kind of forces us to use the Android Studio, which we don't need as Unity. Developers. Yeah, generally the goal, the goal with this tool is that it will be the same for every platform. We want it to work on the consoles, on the mobiles, uh, locally on the PC. You can profile editor. As you see, you can profile even the, uh, this is funny fact, uh, profile the profiler, which I already done a few times where, because of some reason, we had two instances of the profiler, which turned out that it was just back that we somewhere that didn't release the reference uh, for it quick enough. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Hello. You mentioned uh, it will scale well with big projects. Yes. Uh, have you, what's the biggest test, stress test you've put the profiler to? We had occasion to test it on the Firewatch. So this is right now uh, the biggest that we tested, but we plan to test it on a lot bigger projects. Generally, uh, one of the requirements for us uh, will be that we'll be writing the test that we'll be allocating like two gigs of the managed memory and we'll try to dump it. And uh, the profiler needs to work with it in feasible time, of course. So no half hour of waiting. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Well, I rushed a little bit. But if you have more questions, generally we are still available here. And I can go to the so tomorrow, 12 till 3, there will be three people from my team. I know that we most of the time hiding in our cave called Copenhagen office, but uh, we are here for you guys. There will be Martin, who is working with the tools. So if you have any problems there, uh, like the usability of it, come to him, complain, ask the questions. There will be me 
who, if you want to like uh, try the profiler, I have on my computer, so we'll be able to try it and see what it can do. Uh, it's nothing really secret, so feel free. And there will be Alexei Zakharov, who is the guy for the profiling tool. He's generally working on the profiler and try to make it faster and generally usable as much as possible. In the meantime of these uh, three hours that will be there, Alexei will be in the booth as the expert also, which is right next to it. And in Thursday, for the end of the day, if somebody uh, wants to talk with me once again, I will be in the as the expert between the three and four. And thank you. Prepare for the keynote. <laughs>